Welcome to Lesson 3, Compositions of Transformations. Our objectives are to understand composition notation and to perform multiple transformations to an object called a composition. Notice that we now have a notation to help understand what we want to do. So if we look below here, this circle right in the middle, that means we're performing a composition. So anytime you see that circle right here, that means composition. When we see a composition, we always work from the back forward, or I should say from the back to the front. So in this case, this T is a translation, and this means that we are going to move in the positive direction 3 for X, and in the positive direction 4 for Y. So this is just a translation. This little r means it's a reflection, and you can tell by looking at the subscript X axes. We are going to reflect over the X axes. So as we move through our practice problems, I will be pointing out to you the different composition notations for each composition. Let's look at a really basic one right now. We just have a point, just a point. And let's go ahead and label this point because it's going to be very important when we're doing a composition of functions that we keep our labels. So we'll call this point A. So what is this saying here? Well, we have the little circle in the middle, which means we have a composition. This means we're going to reflect over the x-axis and reflect over the y-axis. But which do we perform first? Remember that we always start from the back and work to the front. So we are going to reflect over the y-axis first. Well, the coordinates of this point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, are 4, 2. And if you remember, with your reflections, when you reflect over the y-axis, these points stay the same, but one of them becomes opposite. And if you look in your notes, you'll see that the x-coordinate becomes opposite. So what we want to do is plot a point over here that is negative 4, comma, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. And then we would label this point as A prime, because it is a reflection, it is an image of our original Point A. Now we have performed this first transformation. Now we move over here to the reflect over the x-axis. When we reflect over the x-axis, what happens to our points? Remember that our points stay the same, but now our y-coordinate becomes negative, or I should say it's multiplied by a negative 1. It changes signs. So down to a point that is negative 4, comma negative 2. So let's find that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. And this point is now going to be labeled as a double prime because this point has had, it's the second image. It has changed twice from our original point A. So now we have a double prime. Okay, let's look at another composition that's really common and that would be a glide reflection. So when you hear glide reflection, what you want to think about is translation and then reflection. A glide is merely just a translation, a movement from one place to another. And we already know what a reflection is. So if we take triangle ABC, remember that we work from back to the front. So the first thing we would do is reflect it over this line. And we would get this triangle here. And then we would perform a glide of some vector. And this is what this is, going from this dotted triangle to our final image, A prime, B prime, C prime. Let's go ahead and try a glide reflection. And in this glide reflection, we're going to go ahead and plot each image. So we'll want to make sure to list our first image as A prime, B prime, C prime, and then our final image as A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. So let's first interpret what our composition is. Well, remember we're working from the back. So little r means we're going to reflect over the x-axis. And this t means we have a translation. And we're going to go negative 5 to the left for x. And we're going to go 1 up for y. So let's perform our first transformation. Let's do a reflection over the x-axis. So we're going to take our points. And we're going to make the y portion become negative. Or, an easy way to do it if we're on a graph is just to take the coordinates and count and make sure that we reflect 
the same distance away from the x-axis on each side. So I'm going to make it official though because we're going to be doing two transformations. So I'm going to list our points, our original points here. That way we can transform them as we go. Our first transformation is our reflection. So let's go ahead and reflect over the x-axis. So I'm going to write reflect here over the x-axis to help remind myself. So this point then, this new point, becomes a prime and it becomes negative 1, negative 7. Remember that when we reflect over the x-axis, just the y-coordinate changes signs. So our b prime will now be 4, negative 6, and our c prime will now be 2, negative 3. And it's just a good idea when you're performing a composition of functions that you keep track of your points every time. So that way you can transform the last set of points. You never want to go back to the original set and redo a transformation. As you go down the list, you'll always perform the next transformation on the last set of points here. So I'm going to perform the glide transformation on the A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, let's go ahead and plot this. So my A prime is going to be at negative 1, negative 7 down here. My B prime is going to be at 4, negative 6, so right here. And finally, my C prime is at 2, negative 3. And I'll go ahead and connect those dots. And we have our first transformation, and I notated that by the primes. Let's go ahead and do our third transformation, or our second transformation, which is a glide. So when we perform a glide, remember we are just performing a translation. And we want to translate by negative 5 to the left and 1 up. So the easiest thing to do is to subtract 5 from all the x's and add 1 to all the y's. So let's list what we're going to do here. So we're going to translate by negative 5, 1. So I'm going to write negative 5, 1 under every point, and then I'm just going to add down to get my new set of points. Okay, I don't want to forget that negative. So negative 1 plus a negative 5 will get me negative 6. Negative 7 plus 1 is also negative 6. I can plot that point here. This is now my a double prime. 4 plus a negative 5 is negative 1. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. And I can plot that point at negative 1, negative 5 right here. And this is my b double prime. My final point, 2 plus a negative 5 is a negative 3. And a negative 3 plus 1 is a negative 2. So negative 3, negative 2 is right here. And that's my c double prime. I'm ready to connect my dots. And now I have my final image, which has been transformed twice. First, it was reflected over the x-axis, and then it had slid. It was a slide or a translation of negative 5, 1. Let's do a final transformation. In this example, we have our same triangle, but this time our composition says that we are going to reflect over the y-axis, and then this big R means we are going to rotate it 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and reflect over the y-axis. When I reflect over the y-axis, just my x changes signs. So this becomes positive 1, positive 7, negative 4, positive 6, and negative 2, 3. Remember to look at your rules to understand how to reflect. Plotting this, we have 1, 7, a prime. We have negative 4, 6, b prime. 
and we have negative 2, 3, C prime. And there's our first image. Let's move to our second transformation. We have a rotation of 180 degrees. Remember that when we rotate 180 degrees, X and Y stay in the same place, they just switch signs. We have negative 1, negative 7. We have positive 4, negative 6. And we have positive 2, negative 3. So all I did is multiply each x and y coordinate by a negative 1, which causes the signs to flip. Let's go ahead and plot. Our a double prime is negative 1, negative 7. b double prime is 4, negative 6. And c double prime is 2, negative 3. And now I have performed a composition of transformations by first reflecting over the y-axis to get my purple triangle and then rotating 180 degrees to get my pink. So remember, the second transformation is made on the first transformation and the first transformation is made on the original shape. So each time you transform the original shape, you start with the new coordinates for the next transformation. And that concludes our lesson today on compositions of transformations. So at this point, hopefully you are understanding composition notation. Remember to do the last one first and the first one second. And now you can perform multiple transformations to an object. It's called a composition.